Hello, this is the third video in the short series about um, this 3 inch vertical steam boiler. So today it's time for the second water pressure test. Um, so uh, before I go into that though, for those of you who are not acquainted with these little boilers, I'll just give you a quick rundown of its anatomy. The boiler is set up on this this test rig here, this wooden structure, it's simply to hold it up in the air so that we can put the water reservoir beneath it, simply for the purposes of this test. It's a temporary structure. Um, so it's a three inch boiler. It's got five fire tubes that run right the way through the boiler to increase the heating surface area for the water in the boiler. Um, the fittings that we've got, well, here we have one check valve or clack as they're sometimes known. And that's uh, attached to this ball valve, which goes down to this hand pump, which pumps water up through the check valve, which has a ball bearing in it, so it's a non-return valve, and that takes the water into the boiler by hand pump. On the other side, we have a second check valve and another ball valve. The ball valve is really just to close off to stop any water from, from dripping back through the, the check valve. Um, but the reason I put a second one in is because regulations, um, I believe, require two routes of entry into the boiler. And I would like this boiler to pass its, its inspection at some point. Next round we have the water level gauge, um, which is a three cock gauge, this, this one, which is quite a nice type of gauge. But that shows the water level in the boiler and the water level should be somewhere in the middle of this when it's for operating. At the top, we have the blower valve. Now, the blower valve takes a jet of steam from the boiler and routes it up the smokestack of the boiler, which hasn't been fitted yet, but that creates a nice updraft to help pull the heat from the heat source up through the tubes into the bottom, from the bottom of the boiler. Um, and again, it's a little ball valve that can be opened or closed to whatever degree. Um, on top of the boiler we have these two bushes. Now what's fitted to these bushes at the moment is this pressure gauge which is simply for purposes of this hydraulic test and the other one is open so that when I went, go to fill the boiler with water for the hydraulic test I'll fill it right to the top of this bush and then I'll screw in this little blanking plug sealed by PTFE tape to seal the system before we increase the pressure. Now what will be attached to these uh, these bushes in in actual operation is one will have the, the steam out valve, which will be another globe valve, and also the safety valve, which is set to blow off at 45 pounds per square inch. Um, and I think that's it. No, it's not. Here, where there's this blanking plug, will go the steam pressure gauge. That's one of the two things we don't have attached today for the, the water pressure test, the other being the safety valve. These will go on later. And finally, we've got this at the bottom, which is the blowdown valve, which is just for draining down and emptying the whole boiler. It's the lowest valve in the boiler. The idea with the bushes is that they will come up through the top cap. Whoops! They'll come up through the top cap through two holes in the top cap, so that the valves can can sit above the level of the top cap, and the top cap will have the, the chimney, the smokestack attached to it. So I think that's about it. What we're going to do is, I'm going to switch off the camera in a minute, just so that I can concentrate on it. But I'm going to hand pump water out of that plastic reservoir up to fill the boiler right up to the top of that valve. And then I'm going to screw the, the blanking plug in um, and uh, seal that with PTFE tape and screw it in. Then pump water into the boiler. No, sorry. Once, then, then increase the pressure of the water in the boiler up to 1.5 times working pressure for the second steam test. Remember, it's already passed its first steam test, so the boiler itself should still be steam tight. Um, but this really is to test all the fittings and make sure that you know there's no problems with the the seal in any of these. Um, there's Taz the cat waking up and trying to, wondering why he can't get out of the the door. Reason. <laughs> reason being that the washing machine was on so I had to shut the door um, so that it didn't interfere with this video and, uh, and he's not used to that door being closed. Anyway, um, yeah, so one and a half times working pressure for this test 
um, and the torquing pressure is 45, so that's about 67, 68 psi. And we'll take it up to there and then watch it to see if the needle stays at that pressure um, and if it doesn't, look for any leaky fittings. Back in a minute. Well, I took it up to pressure and as you can see, it's leaking quite badly from the top part of the water level gauge. And there's also a, a drip here where the blower valve is screwed into its bushing. So clearly that's no good. I'm going to need to go back and redo these. How frustrating. Not surprising, but frustrating. I shall see you later. Well, it's now another day and in between this and the previous segment of the video there's been a little bit of a disaster because the leaky bushings for the water gauge led to me having to change the water gauge and you know it's the first time I've done this so I wasn't quite sure about how tight everything should be but to cut a long story short I cross threaded one of the, the nuts on the water gauge and ruined the threads and this is a tiny piece of precision engineering very nice quality gauge made by Dave Noble and it's a three cock water gauge and the stripped thread was such that I wasn't going to be able to repair it well I may have had I may have a try at it yet but it was um, going to be a fiddly time consuming job and I wanted to get on so I just bit the bullet and bought another water gauge these are not cheap as I say they're nice very nice quality gauges and just to let you see the it's a three cock water gauge the one on the top allows access between the boiler body and the glass the one the back one at the bottom does the same and the third one is a blow down so that you can blow all the water out to make sure the level's right and there's no air trapped so basically you know that's a very sensitive tiny piece of engineering so rather than try and fix it or replace it the damaged one I may try and replace, uh, repair at some point at my leisure but um, just to let you see the it's the schematic of how the valves work, the gate, the cocks work. There we go. Um, horizontal and vertical open and closed, for those of you who are interested. And it's now set up so that I can, so that um, it should be able to fill the, the boiler with water for its second water test. And the water should be able to go right up the glass and through the, the system. Um, without any problems and indeed I've already tried this and found that it was okay but this is a second second water test just to make doubly sure so I'll switch off now and, and fill it up so we're about halfway now um, and as you can see you might just be able to see there the water level is halfway up the, the glass and that's where you want to keep it when you're on steam but of course this is a still a water test so I'm going to ignore that and go right up to the top until it starts to come out of this this bushing at the top of the boiler at which point I'll blank that off with a blanking club and the system will be closed ready to pressurise um, just while I'm, I'm on this I should have said that the reason for these two extra well this cock here and 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 uh, and the one on the left hand side at the bottom, no the right hand side at the bottom is so that if the glass should break and when you're under steam you can just isolate it by closing these and you don't get all the, lose all the steam and you can calm things down however trying to remember which way um, is on and which way is off in a kind of emergency situation would be quite uh, easier said than done except for the fact that you know you just need to turn them the other way than they're at already but I can just imagine fumbling about with these and panicking if that were to happen fortunately I understand the glasses don't break too often anyway I shall continue and be back on once I've got the boiler full so you'll see now that the the bushing there and the extension to the bushing is blanked off with a blanking plug sealed with PTFE tape temporarily um, remember, of course, that what's going to happen with these two top bushings eventually is that the, the extend, bushing extensions will come out through the cap. And where the test pressure gauge is, the steam outlet globe valve is going to be. And where the one that's blanked off is going to be the, the pressure, uh, sorry, the safety valve. So now, it should be all sealed off. 
I'm going to now take it up to 1.5 times working pressure. Working pressure is 45 pounds per square inch, so 1.5 times that is just under 70, so it's 68, 69 psi. So I'm going to do that now, and um, we'll come back after that. So, there we have it. Pressure gauge is sitting pretty there at tiny fraction over 70 psi. It's not moving. There's no sign of any leaks anywhere in the system. Water gauge full of water. Everything tickety-boo. This is a great moment for me because basically what it tells me is that I have a viable boiler. And I can say that now with confidence for the first time after many months of work actually and trials and tribulations. So I'm very pleased. The next stage is its first steam test. Live steam, here we come. So what happens next? Well, you can see the uh, the cap with its smokestack or chimney, which I've silver soldered on. I've got a circular, milled a circular locating groove in the bottom of the cap, the underside, and that fits with the top edge of the boiler barrel. The two bush extensions come up through the holes in the cap, and into these are fitted the steam outlet valve, which is a globe valve, and the safety valve. Uh, the cap is held in place by these two nuts, which screw onto the out external threads of these two bushes, bush extensions, and the whole top part, which you could call the smoke box I guess, is kind of sealed to airtight with, well sort of airtight, with um, this carbon gasket material. It's just so that it makes it more efficient so that you don't get air being pulled in top under the cap um, which would detract from the draw from the heat source below. So that's the next step and um, once we've got that done um, it will just be a case of fitting the steam pressure gauge to this bush here which is currently blanked off and then we're ready to apply a heat source and try it out on live steam. Hey! So here it is, all assembled with the cap in situ and pretty much all fittings attached. And pretty much ready to be dismounted from the water test rig. Disconnected temporarily from the hand pump. And given its steam test. So here we go. We're cooking on gas. I've got the boiler sitting on top of two fire bricks, sitting on top of this big gas ring. It's too big really, but it was the best setup I could find, so I'm sure it'll do. There's plenty of heat coming out of it, and you can already, when you touch the boiler, two few seconds after lighting it, it's already starting to get warm. So the gauge glass is half full, and what we're looking for is to see that water level bobbing up and down which will indicate that the water's boiling. But my plan is to now wait for the safety valve to blow off. Um, I'll hopefully be able to come back to you later, although I might be a bit taken up with looking after this setup. Well, it's taking its time. There's a little bit of steam finding its way out of the safety valve, but it's not really blowing off as such. Maybe it will shortly. I'm noticing that the pressure gauge Oh, well, maybe it's starting to climb a little bit, but it's not climbing very much. I was wondering if I'd block the hole in the the attachment for it, but the banjo. But I guess that it's probably just slower than I expected it to be. The water in the water level gauge isn't moving yet. I think I'll just sit and wait, watch this, and see what happens. Probably all going in the right direction. I've got it surrounded with fire bricks at the bottom to retain as much of the heat and let it go into the boiler as possible. I may be wrong, but I'm guessing that this might be what's called priming, which is a kind of, as I understand it, a kind of premature bubbling off of liquid and gases before the boiler actually reaches full pressure, which is caused by chemicals left over from the process of making the boiler. However, I don't know. I'll have to check that out. But meanwhile, 
the pressure gauge is slowly climbing and it's getting up sort of getting up towards working temperature sorry working pressure now well the pressure gauge is showing over 50 now and the safety valve is supposed to blow off at 45 and although steam's coming out of it I don't consider that as blowing off but the water still doesn't seem to be boiling even though it's climbed up in the glass I'm not panicking at this stage but I'm beginning to wonder sort of slightly anxious about this the thing is you have to come near it to do anything with it hold patience well, the safety valve did blow off, and there it goes again. Now look at that. Isn't that something? That's the power of steam. Whoa! Right, I think you get the picture. Overall, we're good. I'm now going to go and turn the heat off and open the main steam valve. Turn off the gas, which I've done, and then open the steam valve and go to the engine. She's a boiler.